Minimalism brings a certain beautiful balance to life, unlike anything I've seen or witnessed. On one end of the scale, it eliminates all the excess that would otherwise occupy our time and our energy, cloud our mental space, and hold our finances hostage. But in the same breath, on the other end of the scale, it opens the door to so many other opportunities that can bring value into our life without the need or want for unnecessary clutter. And that right there is the topic of today's conversation. How can we, or what are some ways that we could bring value into our life without adding clutter? The first thing that comes to mind for me are meaningful relationships. Growing up and living through various stages in my life, from a child to preteen, teenager, young adults, and now husband and father, I've experienced so far in the last 30 years and can attest to the fact that you only get a few real friends in a lifetime. And the thing about friendship is that we use the word friend very loosely in our culture. Friend meaning a person who one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically platonic. Growing up, especially in the days of middle school and high school, I remember calling everyone I knew my friend, a friend, right? And sure, I was closer to some of them than I were others, and I knew some of them longer than others, but everyone at some point I considered a friend. And I use that word friend very loosely. And maybe you can relate to this. Just think about how you talk about or introduce the people you know in your life as your friend from work or your friend from a sport or hobby you have an interest in or your friend from insert however you met. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this, right? But you can quickly see how easily we attach the word friend to everyone we know, regardless of where, when, or how we met them and how often we interact with them. Now, if I've learned anything worth sharing, it's that friendships, especially how loosely we throw that word around, and meaningful relationships are two different things. But how so? And what are meaningful relationships anyway? Meaningful relationships are those that are deemed significant and include mutual respect, trust, interests, positive regard, and making the other person feel valued. The key to making these relationships grow involves building on elements of honesty, and finding commonalities to help create that lasting foundation. Now see, with this understanding in mind, I can confidently say that not every person you consider to be a friend will garner the title of a meaningful relationship in your life. And not every meaningful relationship you're blessed to have will come from the friend you've known the longest. That might sound shocking, but it's an important reality to be aware of. So now, now the question becomes, what are some things we can do to help us find and develop those meaningful relationships? because meaningful relationships are a great way to bring value into your life without adding clutter. And there are two actions you can take. Number one is spending time with people in the same season of life. And number two is spending time with people in a completely different season of life. Here's why both are important. Spending time with people in the same season of life is an easy first step because right off the bat, you all more than likely already share some commonalities. Maybe that's kids, so you're all parents, or maybe you share interests in a certain hobby or activity. This is why it's common to see moms that want to hang out with other moms, dads with other dads, athletes with other athletes, and so on, because there's a certain level of comfort that comes from being around people that are in the same season of life. But my challenge for you, and this is a challenge that I've accepted in my own life as well, especially now that I'm a dad, but my challenge for you is to get out there and meet new people that may or may not be in the same season of life. This is important because you never know who you'll develop a meaningful relationship with, and you don't want to limit yourself or miss opportunities to meet and connect with people just because they're not in your current circle of friends, right? And speaking of that, this is why it's also important to spend time with people who are not in the same season of life. Doing this exposes you to people and the potential to develop meaningful relationships that you otherwise would have overlooked and probably ignored simply because they're not in the exact same season of life as you. Now, I have a close relationship with another guy in my life who on paper is not in the same season as I am. I'm married, he's not married yet. I have a kid, he doesn't have any kids. But outside of that, outside of what's on paper, we both consider each other to be a meaningful relationship to one another. In fact, a couple of months ago, we were having a conversation about meaningful relationships while we were playing pool. And we were talking about how when you find those people in your life who become those meaningful relationships, there's just something about them, right? There's, there's a spark. And we were trying to give meaning to what that spark meant, how to explain it. And the similarities we saw or that we are experiencing between that type of spark and the spark you get within a romantic relationship. 
It was a very interesting conversation that I love to revisit in some way that you can be a part of and listen to. But the key takeaway here is to remember that if you want to bring value into your life without adding clutter, then it's a really good idea to find and prioritize more meaningful relationships. Another thing to consider and an easy way to bring value into your life is through adventure or traveling, both locally in the area you call home and outside of that area. But here's the thing. Being adventurous isn't necessarily the easiest thing to be, especially if it's not naturally part of your personality or of your home body at heart. However, being adventurous is something that you can learn to be, especially if you're open to it. Because check this out. Living an adventurous life leads to crazy things like happiness and fulfillment. But that doesn't mean you should pack up your bags and travel halfway around the globe tomorrow, right? It's not very realistic either. But what it does mean is that you should start slow. Explore your hometown or city. Take a short weekend trip somewhere, right? I like to call these type of adventures micro-adventures. And it doesn't mean that they're any less in terms of value, richness, or opportunity, but to say that they lower the barrier to getting started. Often, whenever we hear advice that tells us to go on an adventure or to explore new places, we cognitively connect that to cost and consciously say things like, ooh, how much is that going to cost again? Or what if I can't afford to travel right now? And I get it, right? Sometimes money's tight. Don't spend what you don't have to spend. But see, that's the thing I love about micro-adventures. They don't cost much of anything and they don't require a whole lot of pre-planning. You can go on a micro-adventure right now in your own city. And you know what? That adventure and the memories and stories you'll gather from it will without a doubt add value into your life without adding clutter. Learning is a big one as well. And another easy way to bring value into your life without adding clutter, because learning, learning doesn't cost you much of anything in terms of physical real estate in your life, right? Sure, there might be a hobby or skill that you're currently learning, and that hobby or skill might require a few things, but that's minimal compared to most clutter we keep in our lives. See, learning is one of those things that you can indulge in no matter your age, circumstances, or lifestyle. And when you choose to prioritize learning, you're choosing to place the growth of your mindsets over physical things, right? And that's exactly why it brings value into your life without adding clutter. Okay, the next idea I wanna talk to you about is gratitude journaling. And this is a fun one for me as a writer because I can personally attest to the value of journaling and how much clarity it's given me around things that I've struggled to keep the right perspective around. Now, journaling in general is something that you can do with your phone or your computer with various apps to really make the experience clutter-free, right? But there's great benefit to writing out your thoughts with pen and paper. Now, both ways are effective, right? I've used both, and I want to encourage you to choose whichever way works best for you. But see, the gratitude portion of this equation is where the true value comes in. Because gratitude is all about being grateful or thankful, showing appreciation, right? And when you talk about these things in written word, a couple of things happen. There's an increase in your positivity, a boost in your self-esteem, right? There is a reduction of stress and an uptick in happiness. But overall, overall, it changes your perspective on life, on your life in a very positive way. Now, if that right there doesn't tell you that journaling is a great way to bring value into your life without adding a clutter, then I don't know what else to say, right? (laughs) In the last 15 years or so, I've put pen to paper in my life, writing poems, letters, quotes, stories, content for my YouTube channel or podcast, and I can't deny the value it's added to my life and the influence it's had on those who have read or heard my words. So if this message has reached you at a time you need to hear it, then I want to encourage you to write something today. And again tomorrow, And again, the day after that, and so on. You don't have to share it with anyone if you don't want to, but I want you to experience the value this action brings into your life. That said, let's continue this journey of adding value into our life. In this video right here, I talk about how to quickly improve your life with two simple rules. Keep growing, keep learning, always stay true to you, and go ahead, click that thumbnail right there. I'll see you in that conversation next. Peace.